Okay, so up to Prime Minister number 19, the 19th Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. George Canning. Unusual for the time, he was simply known as George Canning. There was no sort of Lord or Earl or anything there. Simple George Canning. Um, Canning was born in 1770, um, the same year as Lord Liverpool. Um, he was born in Marylebone in London. And he is notable for having the shortest tenure of any prime minister, just 119 days um, between the 10th of April and the 8th of August 1827, so very short tenure in office. Um, but for a long time, Canning had been one of the best known parliamentarians in the country. This is because he served in a number of offices as well before his time as prime minister. So just to read out some of these offices, he was treasurer of the Navy between 1804 and 1806 under Pitt the Younger, president of the Board of Control 1816 to 1821 under Lord Liverpool, uh, leader of the House of Commons 1822 to 1827 under Lord Liverpool. Um, he served on two occasions as Secretary of the State for Foreign Affairs, Foreign Secretary, and uh, he doubled up as Chancellor of the Exchequer whilst he was Prime Minister. So he was a very experienced parliamentarian. And that would explain why he, uh, he is perhaps better remembered than you would expect for someone who was only prime minister for a short time. Um, early on, he was involved in the founding of a newspaper known as Anti-Jacobin, which was published every Monday from the 20th of November, 1797 to 1798. Um, and its purpose was to support the government and condemn revolutionary doctrines through news and poetry. This was in the days of William Pitt the Younger. Um, George Canning was a Tory. Um, he became involved in a highly publicised uh, duel with another minister, Viscount Castlereagh. Um, the embarrassment from that duel, uh, the fact that two um, senior parliamentarians had taken such measures, was a major embarrassment to Lord Portland. Uh, and that's believed to be one of the reasons his health suffered. Um, this is from the uh, 10 Downing Street webpage. The happiness of constant occupation is infinite. That's a quote from Canning. Um, I'm not going to read all of this out, it's quite lengthy. But um, he was an uh, enthusiastic follower of Pitt the Younger. Um, and just regarding that duel that I mentioned, um, well, this is some background too. In 1807, he was made Foreign Secretary under the Duke of Portland. His greatest success was manoeuvring Napoleon at Copenhagen by seizing the Danish Navy, but he also quarrelled badly with the War Minister Castlereagh over the deployment of troops. When Castlereagh discovered in September 1809 that Canning had made a deal with the Duke of Portland to have him removed from office, he was furious. Demanding redress, Castlereagh challenged Canning to a duel, which was fought on the 21st of September 1809. Canning had never fired a pistol and completely missed whilst Castle Ray wounded his opponent in the fight. Both men resigned as a result of the incident. A few weeks later, Canning was disappointed to be passed over as a choice of Prime Minister in favour of Spencer Percival. His anger was such that he refused a high-profile post in Percival's government. However, after a brief stint as ambassador to Portugal, he returned to join the government as President of the Board of Trade. He later replaced his old rival as Foreign Secretary in Lord Liverpool's government after Castle Ray's suicide in 1822. Once again, he made a successful foreign secretary, especially in preventing South America from falling into French hands. Um, his own tenure as prime minister, that very short tenure, um, will, can be exemplified by trying to form a coalition with the Whigs under Lord Lansdowne. However, after just five months in office, Canning died suddenly from pneumonia at Chiswick House in London. His last words were Spain and Portugal. He has come to be regarded by some as a lost leader with much speculation about what would have happened had he lived. Um, so there you have a man who has ample parliamentary experience, one of the senior politicians of his day, and yet his time as Prime Minister was very, very short. That is George Canning. And I should say he was relatively young when he died, um, just, um, just 57 years old. So one of the youngest prime ministers at the time of his death.